do it in English. I understand most of French, but when I speak it, it's pretty broken. So, yeah, I'm going to keep it in English. hope that's okay for everyone. I can switch to German, but I don't know if there's a lot of preference for this. So, yeah, my name is Nicola. It is French name, so find people that can pronounce it correctly. I'm an engineer at Elastic. Um, I, part of the Beats team, I developed the first version of File Beat and Metric Beat. Obviously, now it's much more, it grew a lot over the last <coughs> few years. Um, yeah, today I'm going to talk about monitoring Docker, Kubernetes. I touch Kubernetes also part because um, Docker, just pure Docker with Compose, the, the environments I know are often for test environments or development environments in production. It's more often Kubernetes for us now, what I see. So I tackle both and obviously do it with the Elastic stack. The first part I'm going to be very quick because Vol actually covered most of it. So please stop me if it's going to be too quick. That's a stack, you know that by now. The part he didn't mention, we're building additional solutions on top of it. Um, so basically one click to go, more UI. And the other part is we have EC, which is self host the cloud, kind of the cloud environment locally. If you don't want to run the Elastic Stack yourself and scale it, you can have EC. And obviously, as everyone, we have Elastic Cloud. And no, that's not Amazon. Amazon also has a hosted Elastic Search version. That's not us. We run our own. Um, yeah, the Beats family are like with shippers. We have so far six of them. Packet beat, metric beat, winlock beat. I'm not going to touch that today because Windows and Docker and how it works. I struggle. <laughs> Auto beat, file beat, hard beat. Uh, let me go quickly through it. Oh yeah, one point that I forgot. We actually have, I think by now more than 50 community beats. We can do everything. And Leapbeat itself, which is below all this, it's written in Golang, is a framework. So if you have a data source that you want to monitor itself, um, we don't support it. You actually can write your own beat, deploy it on your machine, and fetch this data, ship it to Elasticsearch. So, for locks, we have FileBeat. FileBeat is basically a glorified version of TLF. <clears throat> it's a bit more complex, but it supports multi line, handles, log rotation, which is not such a big case for Docker. Uh, back pressure, sometimes you have peaks and logs in the Elasticsearch. Uh, your Elasticsearch cluster is too slow to keep up. Uh, at least once guarantee. It's not exactly once, because that's a pretty hard thing to do. It's at least once. In most cases, it's exactly once. And obviously, structured logging with Docker, which is just like. Then for metrics in events, we have metric beat, which ships your system metrics, Docker, Kubernetes metrics, but also services, Apache, Nginx, etcd, I think the list is by 40, 45 now, that we have modules to support out of the box. You just see a few here. Then packet beat, um, packet sniffing, you can install it on a machine, it's going to sniff all the incoming and outgoming network packages. Uh, decode part of it uh, and sends it to Elasticsearch. If it's encrypted HTTPS or something else, you can use flows to get at least some statistics. We don't do man in the middle, so you can put certificates into packet beat at the moment to decrypt and encrypt the traffic Why? again. Why not using stuff like NetFlow? So, I, I mean, uh, we actually depend part on it. Um, but the part about Packbeat is that you can install, I mean, you can also install it on, on a lot of machines, but it sends the data in a structured way directly to Elasticsearch. Heartbeat is kind of, uh, we need knows ping them. Uh, you can ping service, it's going to tell you the response time, is it available? And you can do that yourself. You can install it on your machines, define cron jobs, what you should check for and you get all the checks in uh, Elasticsearch. Audit Beat, if you run Audit D on Linux, uh, you're familiar with Audit. You can hook into that. It's going to take all these events. Uh, you can define your own uh, filters, what you want to see, what not, your Audit D rules. 
uh, ODP is going to ship everything to Elasticsearch. So that's mostly a security use case or when you're really interested in what happens on your machines. You can also do file integrity, who modified the file, when, and so on. As I said, I run through it very quickly because now we get to the interesting stuff. So, Docker and Kubernetes, yeah. Um, with Docker, as you said in the beginning, monitoring and logging becomes very interesting again because it's a moving target. When you try to monitor a container, potentially it already disappeared again. Same for logs. Perhaps the container has already disappeared. Historically, you had some hardware, you set up the monitoring agent, it's going to run there for a few weeks, years, and all is good. Virtual machines normally run at least a few days, Docker can be just for one job, a few seconds. So the tooling around it has to change. In MetricBeat and FileBeat, actually one of the modules is Docker and another one Kubernetes. It's not only monitoring the service inside uh, like Nginx or your own application, but also how is Docker doing? How is Kubernetes doing? Is it doing what it should do? Is it overloaded? Stats and how many nodes and parts you have, how, how many Docker containers you have. We have modules for that. So you literally just run one command and it's going to monitor your Docker or Kubernetes environment. I'm going to show that in the demo. Uh, another thing that is special about uh, this new environment is, in the past, often a host name was a pretty good indicator on where an event came from. So if you have your host name in your log, file, log event too, you can tell where it's coming from. But when you get container logs, where did it come from? Like, oh, it looks like an Apache log. It must have been one of the containers. But which of the 200 Apache containers sent it. So we developed so-called metadata processors that each event is, uh, event is enriched. We have it for AWS, because there it's also interesting, but in this case more interesting for Docker and Kubernetes. So every single event is enriched with the ID of the container, the image name, the name of the container and labels that it had attached to the containers. Because then you can actually group all logs from one container together. The ID should be unique. You can also look at all logs from Apache and check, hey, are there some errors? Or if you gave names or have specific labels, you can filter on it. So what this metadata processor is doing is pretty simple. That is a normal monitoring event up here. And uh, you're going to see down here, it's actually running on AWS. It's it's a bit tricky because that's Kubernetes on AWS. So that is just an event from Kubernetes, and here you see it attached instance name, instance ID of that virtual machine it was running on. So it's GC, I like. <laughs> um, and how does that work? How does the metadata process work? I have here the example for uh, Kubernetes. It's the same for Docker. So basically, Docker and Kubernetes have uh, this um, endpoint we can hook into, event endpoint, and it actually tells us everything that happens. A container started, a container was stopped. So we take all this information, build an internal map with it in memory, and every time an event comes in, we match it uh, with, uh, with that event, with the container ID, uh, at the metadata, and then forward it to Elasticsearch. So every single event goes through that enrichment process. And we only do the lookup once when the event comes in, and we also know when a container is gone again. We keep the information for a bit, because it could be a container was stopped and the log is still read, 50 seconds afterwards, two minutes afterwards, it's a delay, you can configure. But we don't want to keep it forever because it could be that over two days you run 10 million containers. So we now have the meta information uh, about the containers. We can attach it to the events, but we still have the problem that new containers come up and down. So historically, you configured what we should monitor. But Right now in advance, we potentially know Redis is going to show up, MySQL is going to show it ETCD. 
but how do we tell the system that every time one of these containers shows up, that it should monitor it too? So that's what we have the so-called auto discovery providers for. And what you can do with the auto discovery providers, you see here we specify Docker. We have three at the moment: Docker, Kubernetes, and Cholokia. Probably in the near future, future we have also an AWS uh, provider. So if some uh, EC2 EC2 machine is boot up, it's also going to monitor it. Uh, and then you you can define a template. And important here is contains. Uh, it's if the Docker the, the container the image is etcd, it contains etcd because actually if you look at the container image, it's etcd double point on the version. So you could be more specific. You say, hey, for 1.x and 2.x of etcd, I don't know the current etcd version, so, but you could specify differently. So you, you see it's an array. And then you define uh, the configuration. It's a module, the etcd one, so we know how to fetch data, which metrics adds, leader self store. And then here you have the, that variable, the host. We also get that from Docker, from the meta, the meta information we gathered before. So every time we get an event from Docker that's, uh, that matches this condition here, we're going to spin up a module with that name and fill in that field. So it could be one, it could be 100. And if we get the notification that uh, the container ID, this specific container ID was stopped, we also stop the module. So you're not going to get a lot of like errors. This service doesn't exist anymore. If we don't get a stop message from Docker, and actually we can't connect, you're going to get an error message in Elasticsearch because in that case, something's wrong with your container. So here it's again for beats. Uh, we get the open discovery event. Uh, we have that internally in the registry. We match it and then start the template. And launch them. So, how do you deploy that? Because historically, you have one metric instance per hardware, like one service per hardware. So, with Docker, it's a bit different, but still more or less the same. Often, one Docker host means one virtual machine hardware. It's all all the gray area, but basically, you deploy it as a sidecar. So if you have a Docker host with, that, with 200 containers inside, you can add one metric B container and one file B container uh, to actually monitor all the logs. If you have 10 Docker hosts, you can have 10 metric B and file B instances. Um, for metric B, because we want to monitor all, all the information from proc and C group, you normally mount the proc file system from the host machine, and for the logs, uh, because we use the, uh, the file output of, JSON, uh, of Docker to gather the logs at the moment, you can mount one in Docker containers because in there, every container actually has its own directory with, with the ID, so we directly know from which direction we have to pick which logs. So you're going to mount these directories in, and we can do all the magic for you. On Kubernetes, uh, it's pretty similar. You can deploy one metric even file bin instance per pod, per node, and uh, it's deployed as daemon set. So you're going to configure a daemon set to get all the metrics. Yeah, so that's the theoretical part. So let's see if the demo works. The questions so far? Or too fast, too slow? Just let me know. Alors juste pour info, euh, les agents ne sont pas obligés d'être lancés dans des containers. Ça peut être une installation de système classique, donc euh, orchestrée, enfin, managée par les administrateurs système. Donc ça vous permet d'avoir des agents qui ne sont pas dans des containers. Parce que il peut y avoir quand même une faille entre les containers applicatifs et les agents. Donc vous pouvez isoler les agents au niveau système, au niveau Linux, et les containers applicatifs. 
Okay. Donc ça veut dire que tu es obligé d'avoir ton agent qui est sur ton host. Donc tu es obligé d'avoir une maîtrise du host. Oui. Tu ne peux pas avoir un docker qui tourne n'importe où et partir du coup de docker pour envoyer sur les ça. Alors typiquement Prometheus, on fait un slash slash log, on envoie les logs sur Prometheus, on envoie les métriques sur Prometheus directement, directement depuis le docker. Enfin docker run, et après on a une option envoyer les métriques. Est-ce qu'on peut le faire avec... Euh... Non, tu, tu peux l'avoir en mode container, ou tu vas avoir tes, tes containers applicatifs et euh, métriques, euh, le, le, le file bit, le bit, ouais. et puis ainsi de suite, en container. Ouais. Par contre, il va falloir euh, mapper, donc il y a des, des bind volumes, ouais. il va falloir mapper des fichiers système. Ouais, donc, euh, ça que ça. Voilà, donc et les administrateurs système, de temps en temps, tiquent un peu sur, sur le fait de binder ce, ce type de fichier, hein, de, de monter ce type de fichier dans le container qui seront après dans le même réseau souvent. Donc, euh... Ils doivent être remplis dans le livre, parce que justement c'est... Oui, mais par contre ils peuvent être en ligne, hein, c'est du débat d'écriture. Hein. Mais euh, effectivement, euh... Mais, euh, les, les deux infrastructures sont possibles. Ok, so what I'm going to do now is basically run what uh, Volunteer created, uh, showed. Uh, I, I created a simpler version for just a demo, but I can quickly show my, uh, the doc compose file that we're going to look at. So, um, big enough? Okay. So basically, what I'm going to do in the demo is I just have this demo container up there for dependency to make sure everything starts in the right order. But I'm going to start an Nginx uh, container. Ignore that for now. It's going to be exposed on port 80, and that's pretty long. Well. Uh, then the file bit one, <coughs> which, as you see, mounts the Docker container, uh, the Docker socket, because we need to connect the socket to get all the information about the containers. File bit one from log directly. And here's the directory for the logs. Um, depends on Elasticsearch and Kibana. Actually, only on Elasticsearch. So I could remove that. And metric beat, again, the Docker socket, how you mount hostfs uh, to get all the information about the host. Then here is what Volanta showed, uh, just my own variant of it, but it's running. Elasticsearch, and here it's running uh, Kibana with the health check to make it sure it's great. So let's start that. So I have a question. Uh, what did I do now? See, it never changed the demo. Any question? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, go on. Um, so, what would be uh, the use case for uh, metrics bits? Because I think Kubernetes. Uh, offer already um, a feature which actually uh, can spin up different instances on different nodes if actually the Docker image doesn't respond to the health check. So what metric bits uh, can offer as a functionality if you do it on a Docker node? Yeah, so, I mean, Kubernetes, for example, also has dashboards. Uh, that you can also have dashboards there. Um, the what Kubernetes does, it collects all the uh, information internally, yeah. and but you have it still in Kubernetes. So metric bit on one thing is it's going to send it externally. To another, so if your Kubernetes cluster struggles, you have an external thing to actually tell what happened. It's also the other part is it all, not only monitors about the containers and about Kubernetes, but also what is inside. What is your nginx container doing? like the Nginx metrics, what is the Apache doing, what is your specific application doing, what are the logs doing. So you in normally in Kubernetes you don't store days of logs or weeks of logs. There is even a, if you start Kubernetes, one of the default setups is actually with Fluent D to get the logs into Elasticsearch. Um, it's a bit of pity that Fluent D, but it's a part of the foundation, so it's Fluent D. Fair enough, but Fluent D has an Elasticsearch app. So as soon as you want to have it external, and you want to have a lot long term and your information about services internally. As far as I know, Kubernetes can't do that out of the box. But why would you need to do that? You actually just want to restart your document if it's fine. Uh, don't you want to know change. the root cause, what happened? I mean, if you don't care what happened, why your container crashed and just want to restart, do you really need monitoring? Because Kubernetes, the orchestration, 
Don't stop for you. I agree. Like we're not going to do our orchestration. Right. Yeah. I'll just use the word. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we don't do any orchestration. That's Kubernetes is pretty good at that. It's really good at that, actually. So, as you see now, uh, the stack is started. Let's see if we have Ivana. So we do. And first thing we do, um, see it loaded to index parent. Select one's favorite uh, star one, and so let's see what is happening. Um, let's get a Docker overview. So that is the modules I described before. That was all loaded automatically by uh, Metric Beat now into Kibana, including the dashboard. So the system I set up is a, a raw Docker container. Like I didn't have anything pre, <coughs> anything additional to it. I could kill it again and. It's it's going to be the same. So that it looks good. We have an nginx container, follow beat, metric beat, one key bond, and elastic search. I think that's what we wanted. It actually seems I played around with the environment before because I've only one stopped. I'm not sure where these are coming from. But in general, it looks good. We also see here the CPU usage, memory usage looks reasonable. And down here, uh, we have all, all the incoming and outgoing traffic. So that is a basic dashboard for the Docker containers. Now we said we also ship Nginx logs. And do I have, oh yeah, I have Nginx. That's going to be localhost, so we have nothing on the map. If you have it uh, in a lot of, if you have access from a lot of different places to Nginx, you would now see the IPs mapped on that map. And because we just have one container, uh, and I just killed the access to my local container. I can't access it. Nah. Yeah, so I just have an idle container I can't access, which is not great. But you see, it reports metrics. We're going to do something uh, inter more interesting so you see what happens. The other part we have from Nginx is access and error logs. So that is boring for now. What we do now is actually use magic in Docker Compose, scale, nginx. How many should we do? Five. Five? Okay. How many? So it started a few. Uh, Let's see what is going to happen. We should probably do auto refresh here. Yeah, so that is good. So even though the logs, nothing is happening because nobody is accessing the server, at least the startup logs of Nginx go in here. So you see, we have one container, we have now five, uh, and it seems Nginx creates frequent logs. Um, and if we go to just overall, what we see that is all the events, metrics and blocks that come in. We can look at a few events here. If you look at one event that came in, we can see which container ID is, which Docker image it was that was actually uh, from Kibana. And down here, we see the exact event, which is actually a metric event from Kibana. Uh, sorry, log. log you have a way to display the JSON, for example, here you have a, a JSON in a, a pretty um, version of the, uh, Very soon. So, uh, what we are currently developing um, is a logging viewer in Kibana, and there you can do it much nicer. So, even if we could show it nicely, I think it's still a horrible view for logs. That's just my opinion, but it's, it's not very nice to look at logs. So what is going to happen, uh, and I'm happy to show you some screenshots after it's on what we do at the moment, but is that all this is basically tail left that you can search inside across all your log files. 
and then you also see have can click on it and have a nice review on the JSON. This is the same problem for the for XML and XML to read oh, the Don't get me sorry with XML. Yeah. I think actually XML is not <laughs> even on the list yet, but ah. we should add it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but because uh, we have all structured here, we see the source, it came from that file, and if you look at another event, it is uh, it's also Kibana. But you see here we have for example Nginx. Um, so, how did that work? We just scaled five containers and it took five containers and we can scale it down again to one and actually it should go down to one again if you look at the dashboard, we have the docker dashboard still nine, oh, need to refresh At least we have five here and one of each. I don't know why it's kind of bad. But I think if I ask Maybe top. The PS minus A. They are hidden. Uh, top uh, one. Yes, top one. Like some. Yeah. What? The... Three weeks ago? I think I should call my Docker <coughs> things again. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so it seems like the information is then correct, but yeah. So um, yeah, how did that work? Let, let's have a look here on what happened. So in the let's first check the logs. So you see in here we have a template, and the first part is hints enabled, and the second one is we just said if you see a, a container. Uh, with Elasticsearch inside, start uh, the logs. So <coughs> I'm going to tackle that in the end, but keep hints in mind also for another thing afterwards. So for metric bit, we defined some static modules. Docker, Docker is always going to be there in that environment. It doesn't. It's not dynamic. It's just metric bit is going to start it, get all the Docker information. The other one, the system, we're always going to have a system. But then we get into the dynamic one. Uh, for Nginx, we defined the condition here. If Nginx exists in the name, we, we start that module. We did the same for Kibana and actually the same for Elasticsearch. The main difference is we filtered, we filtered on and we chose to should connect to because it's different ports. Uh, you could even, assuming you don't run on default ports or ports change over time, you could also have a second variable in here for the port. And the bottom part is pretty simple, output Elasticsearch. That's my internal container, Elasticsearch container. I could also have here Elastic Cloud somewhere in the cloud, but it was not worth it. Um, for FileBeat, we, we had that, but then we had this hints in it. So with all the discovery, we now said, we have Elasticsearch, we have Redis, and Kibana. What if one of your devs, and assuming you're the operator or sysadmin, what if one of your devs now has the idea to run MySQL? Do you need to rerun uh, Metricbeat and FileBeat in your environment? Do you even know in advance what are all the services that someone is going to run? Often that's not the case. So, besides what we have here with predefined templates, we also have so-called hints configuration. And you probably saw it in here. Honestly, I tried it today the first time on Docker. I normally use it on Kubernetes because there you can easily run a new container, stop it in the environment. I'm pretty sure it's possible in Docker too. I just never did. So, yeah. so you can define labels. And we have, convention, have defined conventions for labels. Uh, that you can actually start modules of basing it. So if you scroll elastic the, uh, the blocks slash module, you define the module, you can define the file set for the standard out and standard error. So each container has two outputs, standard out and standard error. Um, <coughs> nicely, for example, Nginx outputs the access logs through standard out and the, the error logs through standard error. There are a lot of services that have more 
than just two logs, for example, Elasticsearch, it's a problem. And a lot of products struggle at the moment. How we're going to solve that? Jason is not going to solve everything, unfortunately. But we have a good example here. It has two locks and it works. So we say nginx uh, on the exa uh, standard out, access lock, and send there. So every time you, the person now can define here what should be monitored when it runs the container. It could be MySQL, it could be Apache. You could even, uh, for locks, you can define uh, which lock, like the exclude lines, which lines should be excluded, like everything debug, you don't want to ship. Uh, for, in the case of, if you want to monitor service, uh, you, it's automatically going to, you can define the port and where it should connect to. So we have these two ways, the one that you predefine, and you know that's the only thing I want to monitor, or if you want to get more power to the person that deploys the container, you can actually just have that one here, um, hints enabled, you could, you could remove all this, and you don't know in advance, in advance what it's going to monitor, but it's going to be a lot. Um, yeah, that, that is the, basically the demo I wanted to run and show. I could show you more in the dashboard, we have a lot of dashboards, but in the end I think you guys are the experts on what you want to monitor. So, I always call it a bit example dashboards, and you need to tweak it for your use case. Um, Why well, you add another one? Because you have another. Uh, if you don't use the hints and you want to add uh, another uh, container, uh, monitor the, a new container. Well, as is a compose, you need to stop it and start it. So that means um, between the the moment you stop and start, you you lose the the logs. Alors, je vais juste répondre. Euh, j'ai fait le test, donc j'ai lancé des containers qui, ont, qui, ont, qui avaient une durée de bit 20 millisecondes et je regardais donc fait bit et métrique bit pour voir si j'avais donc les logs et euh, des métriques et euh, même euh, sur 20 millisecondes, j'ai lancé à peu près une cinquantaine de containers il n'y en a pas aucun, tout était enregistré donc euh, voilà, c'est une connaissance à jour So, so for, for the logs, they are on disk, that's why we're using ah, okay. They are on disk, so even if you restart, one thing we could miss if you really restart metric bin and file bin, we're going to miss the, the meta information. We're still going to know which container it came from. But if you restart metric bin and file bin, we lost some of the information. But if you restart a new and the information is still in the registry, we can pull it all in. But that's the beauty of a file. A file is basically yeah. a queue. Yeah. Yeah. There is, I mean, he showed in the beginning all, all the other lock drivers. And as far as I know, I mean, we discussed a lot if we should have a file with lock driver. We even have a POC since two years. From my opinion... And thank you, Splunk. Huh? It's, it's a marketing. Yeah. Honestly, it's a marketing. And on the other side, uh, the developers of Docker discourage you to file uh, JSON file driver, mm -hmm. even though it's the most stable one. A lot of this log driver, my, that's completely my personal opinion on looking at the code, they're partially broken. There is a very high chance you can lose logs. Like, it's one in a million, but it happens. And Docker is actually aware of that. They're currently rewriting how log drivers work and how we plug them in. So, I think we have a bright future there, hopefully. And, I mean, Docker is still New is probably exaggerated, but it's still evolving, still pretty cool. So, yeah. let's see what we have. Alors, juste pour info, euh, Docker Logs ne fonctionne plus. Donc, le Docker Logs que tout le monde connaît, parce que c'est la première ligne de commande qu'on utilise pour avoir des logs, ne fonctionne plus si on n'utilisait pas le log driver JSON, JSON file ou euh, j'en ai dit. Si vous utilisez un autre, comme Splunk, euh, Docker Logs ne fonctionne plus. Yeah, there is a funny maximum in multi lines. Mm. Um, we actually support multi lines. If you have events greater than 60 kilobytes, Docker splits it in two lines automatically, which is surprising. But we actually now with 6.4 we support it. We can detect it. Yeah, I, I run very quickly through the first part, so I had a bit more time for the demo. Questions for the whole thing. Anything else you want to see?
For Kubernetes, it, it's basically the same because yeah, it's just a different register we pull the data from. Can you do custom? Yeah, go ahead. Can you do custom um, like a visualization template? Yeah, yeah, you, you can do. I could just go in here. Um, Edit. I can. Wait, what's that? It's more interesting. I could add either one, or you can add your own one. Whatever you want to do with it. So that's the standard Kibana dashboarding system. You can do everything you want. But yeah, you can also throw away ninety percent of what we did and get better view on what you need. Or mix logs and metrics. That's one thing we start because right now I always show you nginx for logs, nginx for metrics, which I think. Is especially looking in the future. Is we want to have my question was more about for example, can you give a hole to uh, to someone to see the part of the mail, for example, and not the rest of the, the logs, uh, and split like that the whole <laughs> of, um, of the user? So that, that he only sees nginx. Yes, for example, developer sees some part and uh, mail administrator. Or, yeah. Good timing. Uh, we introduced so-called spaces in 6.5, and there you can do exactly that. Then you say one dashboard is for that user, another dashboard is just for these users, and the default has access to everything. It's called spaces. Yeah. Not there yet. So the next release? Yeah. It's part of XPAC or uh, general availability? <laughs> what, what do you call general availability? Yeah, is it free or not? It's free. That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because the XPAC basic is. I mean, all our code is open source, also the commercial one, uh, like machine learning, which is platinum, is is open. Like you can look at the code, and basic, you, yeah, as both of said, if with basic, you have it just on the license. You can only not use it when you're Amazon and you want to have commercial hosting with it. Une dernière question. Après, je suis désolé, on va continuer parce qu'il est presque vingt heures. No. There. Yes. No. Uh, just. Hey. Yeah. So if you wanna reach me, come to me later, or you can find me almost on any social platform except Facebook or Instagram. I'm not there, but yeah. hopefully on Twitter, GitHub, and so on. So Merci, thank you very much. Merci Valentin aussi, hein, qu'on n'avait pas attendu. Mais... Merci pour ta présentation. Yeah, thanks for having us. Euh, on va continuer par un petit épisode de, de news avant de faire un petit quiz.